some sellers are finding themselves stumbling on some common pitfalls. So today, let's unravel the seven things that some home sellers get wrong in today's dynamic housing market that is costing them dearly. I'm Lisa Salt with Remax Burn and Salt Fowler. Hope you home sellers today enjoy this video about our seven tips and be sure to stay tuned for a bonus tip at the very end. Let's start with the number one seller pitfall, overpricing the property. That allure of perceived housing price increases in a current or in our case now a past red hot market, this often tempts sellers to overreach. They end up reaching for the sky and end up overpricing their homes, sometimes significantly. We call that pricing at the needle in the haystack price. The price that one buyer might pay at some point in time if they absolutely fall head over heels in love with your house and then no other house will do. It means looking for someone who is going to pay over market value for your home in the time frame you want to sell it in. And that is a pretty tall order. It does not happen very often in a normal market. In an extremely hot market, yes, I mean, that can happen. It was happening. However, as we know, those days are gone. We thought they'd never end, but they did. And even overpricing your home in a hot market usually results in less offers, maybe one offer instead of the 10 you could have got, maybe. However, in a balanced or a buyer's market, you will likely just get zero offers. And then months go by and you still get zero. And then the next thing you know, it's a year and buyers are wondering what the heck is wrong with the house. When in reality, nothing is wrong. It's just overpriced for the market. It's just above the market. And in a falling market, the gap between market value and your price keeps getting bigger and bigger until it's like so big, it's like the Grand Canyon. In a perfect world, you would strategically price your home at slightly, well, at or slightly below market value. This is gonna attract more buyers, it fosters competition, and it can potentially drive up the final price. In fact, I should probably do an entire video on that. Anyway, number one pitfall, overpricing your house. Don't do it. The, the second pitfall, not allowing home showings. When you're selling your house, I know it's a pain. I never said it wasn't. I will never say it isn't. It's a huge pain in the butt, but you have to be cool about when folks want to come and see your place. The most money will come to those who make it all about letting potential buyers pop over when it works for them and not just when it's convenient for you. Think about it. Everyone's busy these days. They're juggling jobs, family, you name it. If someone's interested in your home but can only check it out at odd hours, being a stickler for schedules just might scare them off. They'll find something else. I know you have baby's nap time at one exactly every day. I know your dog is home. I know, I know, I know it's a pain. However, if you're wondering if this flexibility thing really makes a difference, spoiler alert, it does. Homes that are easy to visit tend to find new owners faster and sometimes even sell for more dough. It's like this. The more people you let through the door, the higher your chances of getting a good offer or getting more than one offer. It's just, it's pretty much a numbers game. And I realize opening your home to visitors anytime, any day is a bit of a hassle. Maybe it's a big hassle. If you can keep your place ready for showings on the fly though, that's great. I realize it's next to impossible with kids, but do your best. A quick tidy up before you head out can make all the difference. Remember, you just never know who is that best buyer for your home. So to sell your home fast and at the best price possible, it could be just as simple as saying, sure, come on over. It's not perfect, but come on over whenever a potential buyer wants to drop by. It's all about making that sale happen on your terms and theirs. Number three, let's talk about staging tips. Again, in a fast paced market, staging might seem unnecessary, but it can, even in a great market, make a significant difference in the bottom line. There are lots of little things you can do to stage your home that don't involve breaking the bank. Imagine walking into a home that's up for sale and seeing it exactly as the current owners live in it. Personal photos everywhere, quirky decorations, weird colors, maybe a bit of clutter, maybe a lot of clutter. It's cozy, it's lived in, sure, but does it help you as a potential buyer envision yourself building a life there? Not so much. That's where staging swoops in to save the day. Now staging isn't just about making a home look pretty or spending a fortune. It's about painting a picture of potential for every person that walks through the door. 
it transforms a lived-in home into a blank canvas. It neutralizes the personal touches that scream someone else's home and instead it offers up a welcoming, attractive space that buyers can imagine making their own. It's like when you clean up your car and you add a new air freshener before selling it, you know, the pine one. You're showing off its best side. But it's not just about first impressions. Staging can actually make your home sell faster and here's why. Homes that are staged often look better in listing photos and online tours, which is where most buyers start their search these days. 95% of home buyers begin their search on the internet. And if your home looks inviting and well kept right off the bat, you're more likely to get foot traffic. And more foot traffic, again, means a higher chance of getting an offer or more than one offer. Think about it from a buyer's perspective. You're more likely to make an offer on a home that feels move-in ready rather than one that needs a bunch of work or it's too personalized to the current owner's taste. You just, you can't see yourself there. Staging minimizes the home's flaws and highlights its best features, making it easier for buyers to say, hey, this is the one. In the end, staging is about more than just decor. It's a strategic tool that can help sell your home faster and for a better price. Really, it's an investment into the future of your home, ensuring that when potential buyers look around, they don't just see your past, they see their future. And we have a number of videos on staging that you can look into. We have one called Home Staging, Before and After, Eight Tips for Staging the Interior, or you can check out How to Stage Your Home Yourself Before Professional Photos. This is all stuff you can do yourself. It's not gonna cost a fortune. Pitfall number four, seeing only dollar signs. While a high offer is tempting, it's not the only factor to consider. Smart sellers weigh all the elements, such as looking at the buyer's financing terms, do they need a home inspection, and what potential delays could come up. Does the buyer need to sell their house first? A great offer at full price or over full price really isn't that great if it's subject to the sale of an overpriced house in Timbuk nowhere that has a 0% chance of selling. Sometimes a lower priced offer with favorable or no conditions at all might be a wiser choice. In fact, often it's a much better choice to choose the all cash, no subject offer instead of the offer with a myriad of other conditions. Don't only look at the dollar signs. There's much more to an offer than just the price. Number five, let's look at jumping on an impossibly perfect offer. In a competitive market, buyers might make high bids that seem perfect, but they carry risks. I cannot tell you how many times a seller's accepted an offer that is more than market value. It looks like that needle in the haystack offer, too good to be true, only to have it collapse later because the buyer didn't sell their house or they couldn't get the money or whatever, they just disappeared. Input excuse here. And then the seller is always thinking, well, this is what my last offer was, this is what my house is worth. But then a year goes by and no other offer comes in, even close to that. People can offer whatever they want if there's really no skin in the game. An impossibly great offer is maybe just that, an impossibly great offer with no substance behind it. So don't get suckered in by that. Market value is still market value. One guy who offered an above market price that can't really afford your house does not market value make. Don't get suckered and don't cling to that better than market offer forever. It may never have been reality in the first place. Number six, questioning everything your agent does. Yeah, agents love that. While communication is vital, questioning every single move your agent makes can really slow down the process. Take it from me, I've lived it. Trust your chosen professional to navigate the intricacies of selling your home. Ask for their plan. What is their plan? And then of course, ensure they're following the plan and take them to task if they aren't. However, always second guessing with things that were never on the plan can just slow things down and take the focus from where it needs to be. For example, your last house sold from an open house. Sure, we do open houses. We do them a little differently with a whole blitz that I won't go into in detail here. However, we aren't going to do a two hour open house every single weekend because it is literally a waste of time. Time we could be spending elsewhere doing marketing of your home that works better and has a much higher chance of success. Statistics say 2% of houses sell directly from open houses. That is a really low percentage. 
we focus on what works and we have our whole plan written down as our 155 step marketing plan and that's the plan we follow week by week. Anyhow, I digress. The point is understand your chosen realtor strategy. They should have one written down that they can give you to follow and then let that realtor execute it without all the unnecessary hurdles. We always value input, of course. However, if it's constant and constant, it gets in the way of the process. Number seven, trying to sell your house yourself. Now, I don't mean for sale by owner. I mean, when a realtor comes to show your house, you're following them around and shadowing them the entire time. Some sellers, they attempt to micromanage all the showings and end up trying to oversell the property. And that can be totally counterproductive makes the buyers uncomfortable, makes the realtors uncomfortable, and trust the buyer's agent to guide their clients through the property. Like just, you have to get out of the way. That's what they do every day. Give them space. Buyers often decide within the first few seconds whether they want the home or not. And a seller's interference might lead to missed opportunities. You don't wanna be beacon in everybody's ear the whole time. Best to just leave during showings. If you can't leave, go outside, go for a walk, take Fido for a walk. Our best advice is clean up, turn on some lights and get out. And those are our seven tips, but I promised you a bonus tip. Here it is. The first offer is most often the best offer. Well, my home has only been on the market for two days. Conclusion number one, sellers make. I underpriced it. Conclusion number two, oh, there'll be more offers and they might be better. Well, it's a bit more nuanced than that. So let's break it down. When you first list your home, that's when it gets the most attention. Your home is fresh on the market, excitement is high, and interested buyers are keen to make their move, like they're excited. This initial buzz is golden and we only get that one chance. And the first offer you receive is often coming from someone who's been waiting in the wings for something just like your home to come up on the market. They've likely been searching for a while and they're ready to pounce on something that meets their criteria. And this enthusiasm translates to a willingness to make a strong offer to secure a deal before anyone else beats them to it. Holding out for a better offer might seem like playing it smart, but here's the catch. The longer your home sits on the market, as we said before, the more potential buyers might wonder why it hasn't sold yet. What's wrong with it? Is it overpriced? This perception can lead to lower offers down the line. Buyers might think you're getting desperate to sell. That's not to say you should jump on the first offer without thought. That's not the case at all. You have to consider it carefully, consult with your real estate agent to ensure if it's fair and aligns with your goals. But keep in mind, the market speaks through these offers and the first one very well might be saying exactly what you needed to hear. Don't discount it just because it's early on in the game. I guess you could say, in essence, the first offer shines a spotlight on the potential of your home sale. It reflects both the market's interest and the readiness of motivated buyers. So while it might be tempting to wait for something better, oh, there might be something better in the next week or two weeks, we've got a couple of showings booked. Remember that in the world of home selling, sometimes the first chance is also the best chance. And there you go, our eight tips. Please make sure you watch our next video on is it better to rent or buy a house in 2024. Just add some